Yes, I didn't even want to do a video all that bad because I did not sleep last night at all. My son was awake and it was not a good night. But sometimes you guys get a little excited with some of your comments about Ashes of Creation and sometimes I just got to respond to them. So I saw some comments that Slumber was potentially going to break the game of Ashes of Creation. And a couple of reasons for this was because of the 30 meter range and because it has a 30 second cooldown. Now it's not listed on here because it was not on the tooltip, but in game game we did notice it had a 30 second cooldown a couple things one 30 meter range i want to show you guys this little clip now notice he's facing this way he's casting slumber right now watch this mob here i don't know which one he has targeted currently i think it's this one because i think i see a red circle under that one maybe get out of the way yeah and you're that's that one target now you notice i'm trying to point at it but you guys cannot see that i'm pointing at uh, you guys notice, notice this. Slumber, to me, you notice how he's casting, facing this way. You notice how the sleeped targets are these two. And you notice how this one is not sleeped. No sleep text over this mob, right? So, is it truly a 30 meter range, or is just that, or, or, or is that just an error on the tooltip? we don't know i tried to find some other parts maybe where there was like a bigger density of mobs but for the most part i couldn't find this was the best example i could find or maybe it's a forward cone 30 meters forward if that was the case there's potentially some mobs over here that would have got slept that i didn't see but 30 meters to me 30 meters is about to about here i would say um just a rough guess based on other games i've played maybe maybe you're right here I don't know, maybe this tree is 30 meters. Um, so maybe it's a forward cone AoE. But to me, based on what I saw, and based on how the devs always got very close to the mobs when they casted it, I think it's like a 5 or 10 meter range. And I think the tooltip is just mislabeled. Another thing I want to show you guys about the cooldown discussion. Okay, here's where he's doing his rotation. And what I want you guys to notice is something very simplistic, but will help to make a point. Okay, so you notice when he uses shell, right? 30 second cooldown. The reason I gotta show you it this way is because most of the tooltips did not have cooldowns listed on them. Ball lightning, 15 second cooldown. Blink, 20 second cooldown. 12 second cooldown on Kona Cold. Chain lightning, 15 second cooldown. So what I'm trying, the point I'm making with this is, these look like the initial pass of cooldowns. They just threw some cooldowns on, nice even numbers. The only one that was a little bit different from was the 12 second cooldown but most of them are 15 30 it's like when you're making a game that's the first cooldown you put on it later as a game gets more developed what you'll notice it'll be like a seven and a quarter second cooldown or something more more nuanced right it's a very first pass and just kind of a rough cooldown pass and it's changing a number on one skill it's not going to break the game Next, I want to show you this. You guys maybe have heard of this game, World of Warcraft. I don't know if you guys have maybe heard of it. A few people have played it. Priest spell Psychic Scream. This has a 45 second cooldown. It causes enemies within 8 yards to flee, disorienting, disorienting them for 8 seconds. Damage may interrupt the effect. Very key part here is may interrupt. Fears and WoW and, and a lot of MMOs are... You can do damage during the CC, and typically, if you do a big spike of damage, you cast a big, huge cooldown, typically your chances of breaking the fear ramp up drastically. But if you throw dots on, typically, in a lot of cases, the fear will go full duration. Now, it's all RNG-based, obviously. This is actually a more powerful CC in PvP than a sleep is. Because you'll notice, and they said in there, that a sleep, any damage would break it. Any damage. Now, the duration, I think, was about 30 seconds, but that's also irrelevant because it's just a placeholder time they threw on. Now, it says here the range is zero yards. It's bigger than that, but it's not a huge range. If you've played WoW, you know it's not a huge range. Now, question for you guys. Do you think that this spell at any point has broke World of Warcraft? Sure, it's a very powerful spell. Sure, it's one that you're going to use in PvP. You're going to have it... If you can have this on your bar, you're going to have it on your bar. Does, has it ever broken the game and made it to where no one wanted to play because of this spell? No. 
And if at any point it was overpowered, they changed a few numbers and made it in line with the other spells. And again, a key distinction, it's even more powerful than that sleep was. And it's AoE. Again, AoE fear. Up to five total enemies. Last eight seconds. This one has a 10-yard range, which is pretty short. It's instant cast. Again, this is something I didn't mention here. This is also instant cast. Another thing to consider with sleep. Not instant cast. Does have a cast time. And it appears to have a pretty long cast time. Let's see. Cast at about 34. Got at least a full second. Might even be like a second and a half to complete the full cast. That is a balance between the instant cast fear. This is quite powerful in PvE if you're in a group that doesn't damage the mobs. In PvP, where people are constantly getting damaged, especially in a siege, is it really that powerful when it breaks on damage? Uh, no. Especially if it's not 30 meter range. If it is truly 30 meter range, which I showed you evidence just a little bit ago that it does not appear to be, and sure, that's a problem, but will it break the game? No, you just change the 30 to a 5. Does the 30 second cooldown break the game? No, you change the 30 seconds to like 3 minutes. It's fixed. Uh, sleep spell, World of Warcraft. Ranged, this one has a range. It's a single target. It's one and a half second cast. Has a 30 yard range. Again, does Slumber have 30 yard range? I say it doesn't, but the tooltip says it does. This puts the enemy asleep for up to 20 seconds, so potentially shorter than the Slumber. Any damage will awaken the target. At any point, have you been on the WoW forums and saw that this spell breaks the game? I'm not playing because of this spell. Probably not. How similar is this spell to Slumber? Well, this one's single target. It's ranged. Has a similar cast time. It's not AoE, but it's very similar. Now here, this game obviously very similar to Arc Age. We know this, right? Now we have a spell called Lassitude, 45 second cooldown, 10 meter range, instant cast, instant cast, but it might be instant cast, but there is a delay before the target goes to sleep. If you rank it up, uh, 50, 15 second duration on sleep, extremely similar spell, um, especially if the range on the ashes spell is around 10 meters, which is what I think it is. Extremely similar spell. Do you think people have looked at this spell in Arc Age and said this spell is breaking the game? I would argue they probably haven't, right? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Now, I want to talk about some things I actually do think could be game breaking because while it might seem like I'm white knighting here and things like that, that's not the case. I see way more ways Ashes of Creation could fail as a project than succeed. And that's not a slight against Ashes. What that is is the reality of MMO game development. It's tough to compete with WoW and Final Fantasy that have been doing it for over 10 years. They're fully polished games. Trying to launch and compete with that amount of content is really hard to do. So that's every MMO has more reasons why it could fail than succeed because statistically more of them fail than succeed. I guess a part of it depends on what you view as success or failure because a lot of people have skewed definitions of what that is. You don't need to have 12 million subscribers to be a success. And for some MMOs, 100k subs is a huge success. It really depends on the budget of the MMO. If Ashes has 100k subs, that's a failure. Um, if this ethereal this your whatever this thing's called uh, ethereal your or whatever if it had 100k subs or embers adrift it had if that had 100k subs huge success for that project so it's relative okay ashes at 100k subs is a failure what was i talking about um <laughs> i was talk i was going to talk about a couple things that i've been looking at for a long time and no one probably heard me because my channel was super small back when I was talking about this. But one of the big things is so far in Alpha 1 and in the Alpha 2 client, we haven't seen a global cooldown. And this is a tab target game. I did a video recently saying this is tab target. And after the mage showcase, if you still don't think it's tab target, go watch it again. It's, it's more tab than action. It's a hybrid Guild Wars 2 style tab game. In a tab style game, if you do not have a global cooldown, 
that becomes a tremendous problem. Why could this be a problem? And why could this be game breaking? Because it touches every spell that's not on a cooldown. Um, and we saw a few that did not have a cooldown. And sometimes when you have these big systems in games that target many things, you can run into situations where you try to change it and it breaks everything. And the more things they add into Ashes before they address trying to put in a global cooldown, the potential to break something that becomes a massive hurdle to fix or sometimes in some cases impossible to fix without the project running out of money, the odds of that just go up over time the longer they wait to put that global cooldown in. This, my friends, is the best advertisement for exit lag you will ever see in the promo of a YouTuber's video. This is our friend, Lazy Peon, who's been very good for the Ashes of Creation community and brought a ton of people in. And he's going to tell us why you should use a ping booster like exit lag for Arcage. This, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this should open up your eyes as to why not having a global cooldown potentially is game-breaking and touches large aspects of the combat system. It's not just one spell we're talking about here. Before you decide on a class in Arcade, you need to know that this is probably the most ping-reliant tab-targeting MMORPG you can play, as the global cooldown on abilities is very short, and the game has a combo system where some abilities have almost no global cooldown at all. This means that lower ping translates to faster attack speed and more DPS in Arcade. Now, obviously, this is felt in some classes more than others, I, for example, play Arcage Unchained with 180 MS ping connecting from Thailand to Europe. I simply cannot play the Archer class in this game. If you want to play Archer in Arcage, you need sub 50 MS ping, anything higher and you should probably consider another class. In order, I'd say the best classes to play with bad ping are Tank, then Healer, then melee DPS, then mage, assassin DPS, then archer. Luckily though, if you do have bad ping, something you can do is use what's known as a ping booster. And in Arcage Unchained, I'd honestly recommend using a ping booster, even if you play in the same region as the server you're connecting to, because it just makes such a big difference in this game. In the past, I've tried many different ping boosters. I've tried WT Fast, I've tried No Ping, Ping Zapper, and a few free ones. And honestly, they've all been really inconsistent and Here comes me the big issues such as disconnect showcase. and seemingly no actual ping improvements recently the big however one. i took the three day free trial for look at the difference and I was how quickly so by how at 180 milliseconds that i reached out to them a 60 millisecond difference look how much difference the dps is code. so you can find that in the description it's massive below. a ping booster is not a vpn a ping booster is routing software that optimizes the and other mmos connection takes when other MMOs have had this issue with ping, being ping-reliant. Black Desert had this issue. Lower ping, you could do a lot more damage in Black Desert. Don't make that mistake. Is there another solution for this? Have you guys heard of any other solution for this? I have never heard of any other solution for this other than putting in a global cooldown. So they should put in a global cooldown. Not wait to test it until Alpha 2 because... It's already broken. We know it's already broken. Unless they can prove to us it's not, it's already a problem. Nobody's talking about it because people are talking about irrelevant things. I hate to say it. Potential problem number two. Something I've talked about for sure in some of my videos, but it's been a long time. Friendly player collision. Why is this an issue? Well, it's not a huge issue in most cases, but it can be in, in certain situations. You see them trying to exit, and it's just a cluster. Not great. Not great. Is it the worst thing ever? No. Here's another one. Collision with players? Oh my god, this collision with players. Yeah, just trying to get to some of the quest NPCs when the game was crowded in Alpha 1. Trying to get to the siege NPCs when they did the sieges was a nightmare. Huge problem? Not necessarily. But... It could become a huge problem if they have issues disabling player collisions and it breaks something else. Another game that I've been covering for a while, PAX Day, they recently decided to make a change to player collision to, so that in the Heartlands, 
player collision would be enabled if both players have their weapons out, and that's for like PVE reasons, because there's no PVP in Heartlands. But it broke some things. The longer Ashes is in development, the more things that could potentially break if they decide to change this later on. And again, this is using UE 5.1.1. I think it's using a very similar um, UE version as Ashes. Now, the back-end code is different on, on probably both of them, but the potential for issues certainly exist. Um, and that touches everything. Player Collision touches everything. And why, I, I asked around oh, probably about a year ago on the Discord, why do they have friendly player collision? The only answer that I could find that made any sense is because that is their method of providing an AoE cap. So if you have an AoE, like imagine like a healing rain type of spell you see with the WoW Shaman, and many MMOs have a healing rain. It's a common type of spell or just AoE healing circles. There was one in... The Cleric had one in Alpha 1 of Ashes. Um, healing, a big healing circle you put on the ground. There's usually a cap to these kind of things, especially in large-scale PvP, to make them not be overpowered. On both the attacking side and the friendly side, there's caps to these things. Um, but the caps are typically just numbers-based. Like, it can only hit five people. Guild Wars 2, the cap was just five. We saw earlier the Archage CC cap was five on that one particular spell. Sometimes it's spell dependent. I did some research one time because I'm a nerd, and I, I think that the best AoE cap system was one implemented by WoW. And not that I'm a WoW Andy, necessarily. I play a lot of MMOs, but they have done quite a few things right over the years. So for World of Warcraft, what they have switched to at one point it wasn't in Shadowlands, but this is their most recent version of square root secondary target abilities. It does progressively less damage to each target. So the more targets you hit, the more damage you will do. But it'll be spread out significantly, and the last target's not going to get hardly any damage. Which is different from the hard cap, which like Guild Wars 2 uses 5, was a problem in PvP because what happened in PvP... Because of that five cap, what everybody did is run around in a giant ball. And then you'd cast your AoE, and it didn't hardly hit anybody in that ball. So it really didn't do anything. Um, so square root in PvP and PvE is a way better solution. Ash's solution is simply, you can only fit so many people in this circle. That's the cap. But it comes with a trade-off of in cities and busy cities, it's going to be a nightmare. Now, could you just turn it off in the cities? Maybe they can, but maybe that breaks the game because they've added in all these new systems. Um, so to me, this is like an example of something that potentially is an actual game-breaking issue and not one spell. And when I was talking about things that never get fixed, ESO's Weaving Animation Canceling Guide. So... <laughs> This is something that the devs never could figure out how to fix and ended up becoming a feature. But it's a bug that they ended up leaving in, and it's really stupid. And if you don't know what it is, well, look it up. I don't. I, this video is already drug on for a while, but it's not a good mechanic. I don't think hardly anybody actually likes it. So you don't want these kind of things to like exist in your game and, and not get patched out. So hopefully... Some of these things get addressed before they potentially become things that are not easily swapped later on. That's all I have. It's not a big deal. I think Slumber's fine. I don't think these other things I mentioned are a big deal potentially either. It depends on how they coded the game and how easily they can swap these things back and forth. Maybe they've already thought of this. Maybe they've already swapped between different collision states and decided, oh, we can easily swap. No big deal. And maybe they test it every new build. They just test things like this. Oh, we can still swap that. It doesn't break anything. Maybe it's already been thought of. Obviously, we don't know. It's a very open development, but the certain parts of the development are not, you know, open, which is good. Um, with that, guys, that's really all I have. This is a very long video. Sorry for that. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.